it's your turn to play. Real Madrid World opened on April the 9th, 2024. In just under a year since the announcement that Bollywood Park Dubai had operated for the very last time. Oddly, Real Madrid World opened to practically no fanfare and has since continued to fail to gain much attention. Having recently visited, it's no surprise that the park has struggled to attract visitors. And we believe that the park's issues can be separated into three key areas, theme, quality, and design. Starting with theme, the concept of a park based on one sports team is certainly unique. But with this park being located thousands of miles from the club's location, it's undeniably a strange thematic choice. For any of you that don't know, Real Madrid are widely considered as the biggest football team in the world. They often sign the game's biggest stars and have had more European success than any other team. However, despite the huge global size of Real Madrid's fan base, there are, of course, many more football fans who collectively support rival teams than support Real Madrid. This is the first obvious downfall of basing an entire theme park on one sports team, and probably the main reason that it's never been tried before. The idea of utilising sport as a theme within the amusement park industry is one that I believe has lots of potential. But narrowing this audience down to one club is certainly a limiting factor to the park's popularity. Now, of course, people who aren't Real Madrid fans can and will still visit the park. But there are those that will be put off visiting the park due to its connection to Real Madrid. This adds a needless limiting factor to attendance and I feel it would have made far more sense to theme the park on the sport itself rather than on one single club. This would have appealed to all football fans, allowing the park to benefit from the game's global popularity without bringing up the issues of sporting rivalries. With the global audience attracted to Dubai and the underutilization of sport as a theme in the amusement park industry, I actually believe a park dedicated to sport in general could make for an even more interesting concept. Lands throughout the park could be dedicated to individual sports, with the overall park theme being a celebration of sport in general. This theme would then appeal to a much, much wider audience than Real Madrid World currently does. To draw comparisons to other successful parks across the globe, I believe Real Madrid World is the equivalent of theming Disney's Animal Kingdom to one specific animal, or Epcot to one specific country. The park's next issue is that Real Madrid World was not built from the ground up. But instead, it's a retheme of Bollywood Park, which opened in 2016. The retheme of the park was far from substantial, with the majority of changes being confined to the addition of new signs, new colour schemes, and a few additional but far from elaborate facades placed over the previous existing structures. These changes were never going to be enough to make the park a success as the original Bollywood Park was itself a poor theme park, hence why it eventually closed. Further compounding the issue, Real Madrid World is also a smaller theme park than Bollywood Park Dubai was, with the park's entrance having been moved further into what was Bollywood Dubai. Now, when you walk towards Real Madrid World with the park's entrance to your left, straight on and to your right sit the remains of the Bollywood Park, including several attractions which now sit with their doors firmly locked and their theming slowly fading away in the sun. Having also visited the Bollywood Park, I will say that the closure of these attractions isn't much of a loss, as they were mainly rather poor screen-based rides. Staying on the theme of the park's attractions, this is a major issue with Real Madrid World. It really lacks good attractions. The park's GCI wooden coaster is really good, as is the park's huge Starflyer. But as far as the rest of the rides go, there really isn't anything else of note. And with the park costing over 80 US dollars to enter, there just isn't enough within the park to justify this entry cost. At one point during the renovation, it looked like the park was set to get a Mac hypercoaster and a Mac power splash, as track was pictured next to the park. But these attractions were never built. This is a real shame, as the addition of these two attractions would have majorly improved the park's ride liner. Another major drawback of Real Madrid World, and this can be said for the whole of the Dubai Parks and Resorts complex, is that so much of it is built outside. And with the heat being so excessive in Dubai throughout the summer months, this does not make for a pleasant guest experience. 
There are indoor attractions and air-conditioned spaces throughout the resort, but having recently visited in August, I can say with confidence that for the resort to be a success year-round, it needs far, far more covered environments. Other parks within the UAE are fully built indoors, and from personal experience, these parks are far busier than those of the Dubai parks and resorts. As it stands today, I would say that the future of Real Madrid World looks bleak and potentially even the future of the resort itself is not looking all that positive. Although it must be said that Motion Gate is a much bigger and much better park and one that has improved with the addition of new attractions since it first opened in 2016, I do believe the park would immediately benefit from a reduction in the entrance fee. The growth of the theme park industry in the UAE has certainly been interesting to watch over the last decade, and although they have made many mistakes having also recently visited SeaWorld Abu Dhabi, the area's newest park, there are clear signs of improvement. Movement. SeaWorld Abu Dhabi is an incredibly impressive park, and if the future of the amusement park industry in the Middle East trends in this direction, I do believe that there still exists a positive future for the industry in the UAE. Despite this, the Middle East amusement offerings are still regularly described as a complete disaster within the theme park community, but I don't think this paints a true reflection of the industry in its current state. Ferrari World is still going strong. IMG, Warner Brothers, and SeaWorld Abu Dhabi also seem to be doing quite well, and with the more recent openings of unique rides like Storm Coaster and the first SNS Axis Coaster, there are clear signs of better decision making. Despite the negative theme of this video related to Real Madrid World, I do think that there's a good chance that as the years go by, Real Madrid World will come to be viewed as an isolated error rather than a major part of the downfall of the area's theme park industry. Although, I do still think that at this stage, it could still go either way. So, let me know what do you think about the future of the theme park industry in the UAE? And thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my links in the description and some of my other videos.